Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Integers as Opposites, Part 1. So here we're going to talk about what an integer is and help you understand why we even need integers anyway. And then we're going to discuss how to figure out what an, the opposite of a positive number is in order to arrive at the negative number and to understand how negative and positive numbers are opposites of each other. So first of all, what is an integer anyway? So here is problem number one. We're going to find the opposite of two is something. But before we actually answer the question, let's just look at the number line. Okay, everything from here to the left, just ignore it for now. Here we have zero on the number line. And going this direction, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just know that that number line goes on and on forever past ten. It goes 11, 12, 13, all the way to infinity. Basically, it never ends. So somewhere down that direction is 500 million, gabillion, gajillion, quadrillion, you know? I mean, it just never ends, right? So these are all of the positive numbers this direction. For every positive number that we have, there's also a negative number. But notice that the negative numbers are, it's like a mirror. If you put a mirror right between, you have the one here and here you have the negative one, the two here and the negative two, the three here and the negative three. So when we say thinking about integers as opposites, really and truly the positive numbers always have a partner, which is the negative version, and they are, they're opposites of each other. So we can say that negative one is the opposite of one, negative two is the opposite of two, and so on. So when we use the word integer, all we're saying an integer is all of the positive and all of the negative numbers, but just the whole number. So we're not talking about decimals, we're just talking about positive five, negative five, positive 10, negative 10, and so on. That's what an integer is. Any whole number that's positive and also its partner negative uh, number, those are called the set of numbers we call integers. Whole numbers that happen to be positive or negative. That's what an integer basically is. So if we're going to answer the question, what is the opposite of two? Well, first we'll find two on the number line. Two is right here. We'll just kind of put a little arrow right here to show that we figured out what the number two is. What would be the opposite or the partner number of two? It would be negative two, which would be right over here. So if we want to talk about what is the opposite number of two is, then you find the mirror image over here, and so the opposite is negative two. So the number two is an integer, because it's a whole number that happens to be positive, and then the number negative two is also an integer, because it's a negative number that happens to be a whole number. So we're not talking about decimals or fractions, we're just talking about the whole numbers, positive or negative, those are what we call integers. All right. Now I want to talk a little bit about what does a negative number actually mean. So here, from zero on in this direction, I want you to think about in your mind, just to, just to help us understand, I want you to think about this is the money that you have in your account. So if I ask you how much money do you have in the bank, you might tell me $6. So that means positive six, right? If you tell me you have $10, that might be over here at positive 10. If, I, if you tell me you have $2, that would be right here. So what would it mean to have negative $2 in your bank? You might think that is a weird question, right? And it is a kind of a weird question at first. But what you have to remember is that if we have positive numbers mean positive amounts of money that I actually have in my possession, then negative numbers are going to be when I actually don't have that money. In other words, maybe I owe somebody $2. So if I owe somebody $2, I would say that I have negative $2. Because to have $2, meaning I actually have it in my hand, that means I have it in my hand and it's called a positive number. But if I owe somebody $2 and I have to pay them back, I don't have $2 but I know that I have to bookmark it some way that I owe someone else $2. So if I don't have it, but I owe it to someone else, then I could keep track of it by saying I have negative $2. So negative $2 means uh, I don't have $2, I don't have $1, I don't even have $0. But if I'm at negative one, I owe somebody $1. If I'm at negative two, I owe them $2. If I'm at negative three, $3. So you can see the farther I go this direction, the more money I owe someone. So I don't have this money over here. This is not mine. It's money that I owe other people. So if I borrow $10, then I would say I have negative $10. And it would be deeper and deeper this direction. I would owe more and more and more money as I go this direction on the number line. Whereas if I go that direction on the number line, I actually have more and more money. So to have more and more money goes this way. And to owe more and more money goes the other way. Deeper, deeper, negative. I want you to remember that because that is gonna be what you can, everyone can understand. So anytime you see negative five, you can think, oh, I just owe $5. I don't have $5, I owe $5. So let's talk about 
Problem number two, what would be the opposite of six? So if I had six dollars, that would be somewhere down here on the number line, six, right? But the opposite of that would be if I go the other direction, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, that would be the opposite. And if I had negative six here, the opposite of six is negative six, what would it mean? It would mean that I don't have six dollars, but I would owe someone else six dollars. So positive numbers means things that I have, negative number numbers mean things that I, I owe someone else in terms of money. All right, let's move along to problem three. The opposite of the number nine, the integer nine. Let's figure out where that is. We go off to the right, this would be, you can think of it in terms of dollars, but I'm gonna change the analogy a little bit for you. What else could positive numbers mean, okay? Let's think about uh, climbing a mountain, sea level, right? So I'm at sea level, meaning the sea is right here. If I climb a mountain and go up, then I'm climbing positive numbers going up, 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 up the mountain. So if I get to nine, maybe I'm nine meters above the ground. Right? So if I'm at nine meters above the ground and I start climbing down the mountain, eventually I'm gonna get back to sea level, the base of the mountain. But what if I start going this direction? What would it mean to go negative, negative climbing? What would that mean? That would mean that if your baseline is zero and I climb down the mountain to zero, if I, what if there's a, a valley that goes below sea level? You see, sea level is your reference point. The reference point meaning zero. That's why zero is highlighted here because it's in the center. So if I go above sea level, I'm climbing positive distance, but if I go below sea level, meaning into a valley below the sea, then I'm at negative distances. So the opposite of nine would be way over here at negative nine, negative nine. So the opposite of nine is negative nine. And if I said I was negative, me negative nine meters, uh, relative to sea level, then you would know that I'm not nine meters above because that would be positive nine. I'm nine meters below. That's what that would mean. So for instance here, if this is the sea level here, I'll put some little waves, this is sea level, then up here is positive nine, but down here would be negative nine. So maybe there's some kind of like mountain I climb here and then there's some kind of valley over here. So if I climb up, 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 I get to positive nine meters above my reference, which would be, this is the reference at zero. But as I go down below, I get to eventually nine meters below. That's the opposite of nine is negative nine. All right, let's take a look at the opposite of negative one. The opposite of negative one. So here we're actually starting with a negative number. Negative number is right here. What would be the opposite of that? It's the mirror image on the other side, which is positive one. So we're talking about integers being opposites. Notice everything is a mirror in image. This nine is nine units away, and this nine is nine units away. It's just in the negative direction. Here, it's two units away from zero, and then this is negative two units from zero. This is positive six units away, and this is also six units away, but in the negative direction. So integers come in pairs and they're the same distance from zero. So let's ask ourselves, what is the opposite of four? If we had four right here, right? Then what would be the opposite of that? That's four units away. We go four units this way, which would be negative four. So the opposite is negative four. Let me give you another analogy. As we kind of go along, we'll learn some different analogies here. What would this mean? Or could it, could it mean? Let's talk about temperature. Temperature is how hot or cold something is. You all know that zero Celsius is the freezing point of water. So ice is zero Celsius. So if I'm in a room at zero Celsius, that means it exactly is the temperature of freezing water. Zero Celsius, freezing point of ice, right? But let's say I increase the temperature, make it warmer, warmer, warmer to plus four Celsius. That would mean four degrees above my reference, above zero, above zero degrees Celsius. But if I go this direction, four degrees below, at negative four, that would mean four degrees below zero. So just like climbing the mountain, the positive numbers are above sea level, and the negative values are what you would get below sea level. In terms of temperature, the positive numbers are above zero in terms of temperature, and the negative numbers are below zero in terms of temperature. So I'm giving you examples so you know that these negative numbers have real life uses. We use them all the time. All right, let's move along to problem number six, the opposite of negative seven. If we start at negative seven right here, that's seven units away from zero, what would be the opposite of it? Well, it's gonna be positive seven, which again is seven units on the other side of zero. 
So the opposite of negative seven would be seven. Now, also, every time I write a number that has no negative sign, then there's an invisible plus sign. It means plus seven. This is neg negative six, but this is negative two. Every time in all of these problems that I have drawn a, po a number with no sign, it means positive one. You don't have to write the positive sign there. If you, uh, if you just put the number with no sign, you know it's positive. And of course, the negative numbers have negative signs. So I'm gonna take these down. We have a few more, uh, a few more examples to wrap up the concept. All right, for our next problem, the opposite of five is what? It has to be negative five because the positive five would be over here and the opposite of that would be the same distance over on the other side of zero, which would be negative five. So a positive five would be having $5, a negative five would just be owing someone else $5. The negative tells us we owe someone else $5. The opposite of negative three is what? Positive three, because if negative three is here, the opposite is the same distance on the other side of zero, which has to be positive three. If I'm at negative three degrees Celsius, then I'm three degrees below zero, and the opposite of that would be three degrees above zero, which is this. The opposite of eight is what? Well, if, I have, if I'm eight units away from zero, I'm over here at eight units away. The opposite would be eight units away on the other side of zero, which would be negative eight. So for instance, if zero is the starting line of a race, right? If I'm eight meters away from the starting line in the direction of the race, then I'm eight meters away this way. This is if I'm running the race, one meter, two meter, three, I get to eight meters. Positive eight meters means I'm eight meters away. But what if I was negative eight meters? The negative just tells us it's the opposite direction of the direction I'm supposed to go. So if the race goes this way, eight meters is this direction, eight meters away. But if I'm negative eight meters, then I've gone in the wrong direction, eight meters. That means I'm eight meters on the other side of the starting line, kind of in the wrong direction. That's what it would mean in terms of distances, right? In our last problem, the opposite of negative 10, which is here, that's 10 units below zero, would be positive 10 over here. So we put positive 10 right here. Of course, you don't have to put a plus sign when there's nothing there, it means positive uh, number there. So integers are the whole numbers that have positive values and also can have negative values. And we tried to tell you here what a negative value means. You can think of it as just anything the opposite of what a positive number would be. If positive $10 is having $10, negative $10 means I owe someone else $10. If I have five rocks, then negative five rocks would mean I don't have any rocks. I owe somebody five rocks. That's what it means. If I'm seven degrees above zero, then negative seven would be seven degrees below freezing, below zero. And I gave other examples as well. I'd like you to go through these. Make sure you understand the concept of a negative number and thinking of integers being pairs of numbers the same distance on the other side, uh, on either side of zero. So that's why we say integers are kind of, can be thought of as pairs of numbers that are opposite of each other. Solve all these yourself. Follow me to part two. We'll continue building your skills.